Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kitty and I'm an academic doctor in the UK. I've recently passed the MRCS Part B exam after many months of studying in my F2 year, which I'm very pleased about. Many of you have asked me to share how I've prepared for the exam, so in this video I will cover some general information about the Part B exam, the cost of the exam, the resources I used and the time it took for me to revise for the exam. As usual, the timestamps will be available um, here on the side of the video so you can skip ahead, but otherwise let's jump right into it. The MRCS or the Membership of the Royal College of Surgeons is an intercology exam that is required in order for you to handle higher surgical training from ST3 onwards under any one of the four Royal Colleges in the UK, so that's England, Ireland, Edinburgh and Glasgow. The exam is split into Part A, which is a written multiple choice paper that I sat and passed last year in F1, and Part B, which is an OSCE and Viva exam. The Part B exam comprises of 17 exam stations, each lasting 9 minutes, plus an additional preparation or resting stations. The entire exam will therefore take approximately 3.5 hours. Each station has a maximum of 20 marks, as well as a global score from the examiner on whether they feel your performance constitutes a pass, a borderline pass, a borderline fail, and a fail. A combination of these scores will then be used as part of the pass mark setting process. The exam is split down into two components, the applied knowledge, which tests you on surgical anatomy, pathology and critical care, and applied skills, which evaluates your practical surgical skills, history taking, examination skills, as well as communication skills in giving or receiving information such as giving a difficult diagnosis or referring a patient to a colleague, commonly ITU or higher care. Information giving stations are usually preceded by a preparation station where you have nine minutes to go through information provided to you, for example, a set of patient notes or test results. You must achieve a satisfactory pass mark in each of these components in order to pass the exam. Throughout the exam, you'll also be assessed generally on four domains, including clinical knowledge and application, clinical and technical skill, communication and professionalism. Based on the 2018 and 2019 data, the pass mark for Part B tends to be somewhere between 66 to 70 percent, and the pass rate is usually about 65 to 70 percent as well, which is much better than the pass rate for Part A. There are generally three sittings for the Part B exam each year in February, May, and October, and the only prerequisites to sitting the Part B is that you must have graduated from medical school and passed the Part A exam. In terms of when to sit the exam, like the MRCS Part A, there's no necessary right answer. And if we look back at the BMJ article that we looked at last year, examining over 4,000 candidates, the cohort with the highest Part B pass rates are usually those who are taking it at CT1 level, although the difference between grades is not that drastic. There's some argument for doing the Part B exam later on in your core surgical training, where the additional experience of being in a surgical training job day to day might be useful. However, I would also argue that the exam remains very much reliant on knowledge based studying, which can arguably be done at any stage of your training. Personally, I chose to do the Part B in F2 mainly because I knew that I had two rotations in a row where I would not have any out of hours work, which meant I could study much more consistently and taking leave was an absolute breeze. And also, I wanted to be able to start core surgical training without having to worry about exams. Another thing to think about is how long you want to wait between your Part A and your Part B exams. And the benefit of sitting the two exams close together is that you can retain your Part A knowledge, particularly, I think, for the knowledge component components of the Part B. But again, depending on when you sat your Part A, if it was very early on in your foundation training, you may want to gain a little bit more clinical experience before attempting Part B, or you know, maybe you just wanted a break from studying. Right, so let's get on to the depressing bit of the whole thing, the cost of the exam. So the Part B exam itself will cost £997. As an F2, I was personally not able to claim any of this back from my deanery, but as a core trainee, you should be able to offset at least some of the costs with funding. Beyond the exam itself, I also had to pay to travel to the exam in London, which was a £43 train journey for me, and staying overnight the day before the exam in central London, which cost me £197. In terms of resources, I paid for two question banks, which came to a total of £224, a couple of books, which came to around £87, and I also went on a five-day MRCS Part B preparation course, which was a whopping £875, excluding petrol and travel costs. And of course, this may or may not be funded by your deanery. So this came to a total of £2,424.65 and pence, and obviously, depending on your circumstances and how you study, this number will vary a lot aside from the cost of the exam itself, but this is just an idea of how much the exam might set you back. 
Now that that's all out of the way, let's talk about the study resources that I actually use in preparation for the exam. As I mentioned briefly in my reflections video, I found it much harder to prepare for the Part B compared to the Part A exam because there was really no single resource that I found that was sufficient on its own, and I've therefore split this section into different domains of the exam. So first things first, I just want to point out something called the MRCS resource website, and this is like the resource on resources for the Part B exam. It's compiled by a couple of IMG doctors, and it covers some generic advice, reviews on many of the different books that are available for the MRCS exams, and recommendations for study time, and most importantly, past accounts of questions that were used in the previous MRCS Part B exams. Of course, there's something to be said about just studying past questions to pass an exam rather than learning the actual topics themselves, but the truth is that many of the questions are reused in exam sittings and using them to supplement your learning is insanely helpful, particularly for those left field questions that are quite frankly not that useful to know as a surgeon. Moving on to what I call complete resources, these are resources that attempt to cover almost the entirety of the Part B syllabus on their own. Like I said earlier, I don't actually think any particular one of them actually achieves this goal, so you'll probably need to supplement them with some other resources. Past the MRCS was the main complete resource that I personally used. The question bank is structured in a way that simulates the real exam stations and covers most of the topics on the Part B syllabus. Overall, I think the strength of this question bank is that in its um, pathology and critical care questions, which are really good and helps you understand the topic. The anatomy stations were sort of okay in my opinion, they're not comprehensive enough for part B on their own I think, and were more of a kind of word based questions rather than picture based questions, which is what you have in the actual exam. So I mainly use some other resources for the bulk of my ana anatomy learning, which I'll get onto later. I found that the history and examinations uh, stations were also useful towards the end of my revision, particularly with someone else being my actor, and um, actually similar stations was present in my actual exam as well. The other complete resource that many people like to use is the EMRCS, which is much cheaper. Um, the benefits of this question bank, I think, is that it had a really broad scope of topics that weren't in the past the MRCS. And another strength was that for many um, of the anatomy questions, there were dissection specimen pictures. So um, although, again, I wouldn't really use this as my sole source for learning anatomy, but they were quite useful in um, replicating what you might get in the exam. However, overall, I did find the questions to be a bit limited um, in the number of questions per topic and they were a bit less in depth with the explanations and for this reason I didn't really use it as much as the past the MRCS question back but it was useful for reinforcing my knowledge. The third complete resource I used were the doctor exam books, which gave a really good overview of um, all the topics in the Part B exam. Everything in these books is structured in a Q&A style, which is again very helpful in the context of the Part B exam. There are two books in total, and they focus on the knowledge component as well as the clinical skills component separately. Personally, I only read through book one uh, once leading up to the exam. I thought that the anatomy and critical care components were pretty well covered from the past MRCS question bank and the other anatomy resources I used, so I didn't feel this added very much to my learning. Um, there was also a lot of information on the kind of specific steps of surgical procedures, which anecdotally rarely comes up in the exam and it didn't come up in mine. So this book in particular what didn't have very much to study off on, I felt. Conversely, I found the part two book to be much more useful. It covered all the physical examination stations that could come up, the key steps of what to perform and the relevant pathologies and questions that might be asked in the station. It also comes with a DVD and uh, with model examinations, which gave me a pretty good idea of kind of the level that you need for the exam. So I probably went through this part two book um, three times and consistently checked on it after practicing my examination on someone else. In addition to all these resources, there's also the past test question bank, but I haven't used this personally, so I won't really comment on it. Um, and the cracking the MRCS book, which is another alternative sort of all in one book. It's no longer available to purchase, but you can find a downloadable version online. The information is a little bit outdated now, um, and on skimming through, I didn't think it added very much value to what I was already doing, so I didn't really use it myself. The MRCS Part B exam is extremely heavy on anatomy, as you can expect, so you'll need to know this well in order to pass. Much like for the MRCS Part A, the bulk of my knowledge came from the Teach Me Anatomy website. It's an excellent, easy to read and comprehensive resource on anatomy, which is pitched to the level that is almost perfect for the MRCS exams. The only caveat and difference to Part A is that the Part B exam anatomy stations are almost always guided by a dissected specimen or the picture of a dissected specimen, which is not available on Teach Me Anatomy. This is where other resources come into play. 
In particular, this Little Green Anatomy book by Overstore, Get Through the MRCS Anatomy, is absolutely amazing for Part B, and I would recommend absolutely everyone to get it. This is essentially a pocket-sized book with lots of um, dissected specimen pictures and relevant questions, with a focus on identifying structures and high-yield anatomy questions. I went through this book probably about four times in total before the exam, and it really does sear the information into your brain, so I highly recommend it. The other must-use resource, in my opinion, for the Part B is Ackland's Atlas of, of Anatomy, which you can access for free through either the Pass the MRCS or as an affiliate to the Royal College, so you really should be able to access it. This is extremely useful for identifying structures on a specimen, particularly for intracranial structures for me, because it's uh, my weak point, and it covers what you can or can't see depending on the layers removed, which is really useful. For example, you know, the relation of the cranial nerves to the skull, or what they look like with the dura intact. And I find it very useful to watch these videos as a break between studying and reading words on the screen as well. Finally, much like in part A, you might want to use an anatomy atlas to further supplement your learning and I would again recommend Ellis and Matterhaven and Natter's atlas. However, I found that by using Ackland's Overstore and Teach Me Anatomy, this was more than sufficient for me to pass the exam and I actually found the anatomy stations on the day very straightforward. Critical care and physiology is often found to be a very difficult component of the MRCS Part B exam. I mostly studied this using the past the MRCS, but in hindsight I probably could have spent a little bit more time on it. Aside from the question bank, I also skimmed through Kanani's Surgical Critical Care for the MRCS OSCE, which covers all of the critical care topics very well and explains some of the physiology behind it, such as the choroid shift or clotting cascade. I probably could have done with more than one reading of this book. Additionally, I also read through the ATLS and the CRISP handbook before the exam, which covers how to systematically manage unwell patients as well as trauma patients. I attended the ATLS course actually about six months before my exam, so that was actually quite helpful to have the knowledge somewhat fresh in my mind. I haven't attended CRISP yet, but going through the handbook I think is enough for the exam, just to make sure you know all the topics about managing an unwell surgical patient. For surgical pathology, I found that for the most part, past the MRCS alone was reasonably sufficient, although of course there were always going to be some rogue questions that you won't know the answer to. Um, I thought that the doctor exam book one was also useful in this regard, um, but for general surgical topics and knowledge, I basically revised what I had learnt broadly for the Part A exam and also used Teach Me Surgery website to cover some common surgical conditions and their management, which again I felt was pitched at a reasonably good level for the MRCS. For history and physical examination, I used Pass the MRCS and Doctor Exam Book 2, as I mentioned earlier, as my main resource. The most important part for this is to have someone that you can practice with or practice on and just keep practicing until you have a solid structure for your history and you're slick at your examinations. Have a look at the past questions and ensure you've also practiced the more niche examinations like a salivary gland examination as that can often come up in past exams. I practiced suturing and hand tying at home just using some jigs that I grabbed from Amazon and some expired sutures. Regardless of how well you think you can suture, I would still practice this prior to your exam and just ensure you're doing it the right way as taught in the BSS, so no handling the needles with your fingers. For any procedures that I was unfamiliar with, YouTube was my friend and something to keep in mind is on the day you have to choose the instruments you need by yourself before you start the procedure. So remember to sort of keep this and revise this in your head as well because if you miss something and didn't get it, you can't go back later. Finally, I went on a Doctor's Academy course for the MRCS Part B about four weeks before my actual exam. This was a very intensive and very expensive five-day course which included getting taught on uh, key topics, teaching using specimens in a dissection lab, as well as a mock OSCE. I want to make clear very right now that I'm not affiliated with these guys in any way and this is just my personal honest opinion. Um, overall, I thought that the course was very useful, but it was probably not a necessity for me. There was some knowledge cover that I haven't already learnt, which is great. Working with the dissection specimens were excellent, and going through examination technique was also great. And more than anything, really, I went on the course to sort of get the reassurance that I was studying the right things and preparing the right way for my exam. Plus, all the three people that I spoke to who passed the exam just before I was going to sit it, so the previous sitting, have all gone on this course and passed, so I think my anxiety sort of contributed into it. But whether that reassurance itself is worth the price tag of £800, I'm not so sure. If you can get funding to go on a preparatory course like this, that's great. Uh, if you're not getting funding, I think you can probably manage to revise everything anyway, um, but just probably worth something keeping in mind. 
In terms of how much revision time you need, this will of course depend on your study habits and circumstances, like how busy your current job is and how much knowledge you already have. For most people, this exam will probably take about three to four months of studying uh, to kind of learn most of the knowledge and be able to pass. There is a nice guide on the MRCS research website on the recommendations of what they think you should study in what sort of time frame, which I think is actually a fairly accurate representation. Personally, I started my revision in February, so I had about like three and a half months. In the first two months, I focused almost completely on the knowledge component alone, and I took the time to learn the anatomy in detail, as well as critical care and physiology and pathology, and this allowed me to basically get through the entire past the MRCS bank once and to go over the um, Overstore anatomy book twice. For the next month, I kept up with such a space repetition revision for the past MRCS and Overstall, and I started consistently practicing history and physical examinations using the doctor exam books as a supplement. I also attended the doctor's academy course at this point, and I reviewed all the course materials in the sort of following week. In the final two weeks where I was on leave, my daily routine consisted of focused reviews of select questions from the past MRCS and Overstore anatomy, watching some Ackland videos, practicing my skills and examinations, and going through some past questions. Finally, we'll just end on some quick final exam day tips. Um, like any OSCE, just remember to mentally move on from one station to the next. Even if you think you didn't do well, you will still be able to pass the exam despite one or two poor stations, so don't let it get you down and just focus on what's coming up next. Many examiners are happy for you to park a question if you don't know the answer immediately and come back to it later. So remember you can always ask to revisit questions as well if you think you didn't answer it right the first time. Some examiners are more proactive than others at this, so if they didn't offer it, just ask. There's no harm in doing that. And finally, there's no negative marking. So if you don't know the answer, just take a guess. They can't take marks off of you. And that's the end of the video. I hope you have found this useful in your preparation for the MRCS Part B exam. There's probably a few more things that I could say about the exam content itself and exam technique, but I think this video is getting much too long already. So if you have any questions or if you want me to cover parts of the exam in detail or any particular exam technique or what to expect on the day, do let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see when new videos come out. Um, otherwise, I will see you next time.